So we're going to start with questions, multiple choice questions. Uh, we're going to. Uh, you guys can raise your hands. I'm going to pick uh, participants, whoever got their hands raised. I will just call on you. You can read the question. And then, all right, perfect. We got people. We got Milan. Milan, go ahead. All right. Uh, which of the following is not a recognized function of a skeletal muscle? Um, and that would be uh, guard body entrances and exits. So it does have sphincters. So guard body entrances and exits. It does oh, have I'm sorry. Sphincters. For some reason, I was thinking of bones. Um, no. So the key here is not right. You got to remember that. Not basically which of this, uh, which of these, the skeletal muscle does not do. It's not controlled involuntarily. Excellent, right? We just spent like a whole, <laughs> this whole half an hour discussion, right? Saying this this nerve propagates, right? Because you're controlling it. I want to pick up a pencil. I want to squeeze my bicep, right? Upper motor, upper motor neuron. It's definitely under voluntary control. Somatic system, right? Somatic system. Very good. All right. Who else we got? We got uh, Crystal, number two. Oh, sorry, number three. Um, muscle tissue, one of the four basic tissue groups consists chiefly of cells that are highly specialized for contraction. Very good, right? Contraction is the correct answer, right? Yeah. We got, uh, after Crystal, we got Christina, number seven. The bundle of collagen fibers at the end of a skeletal muscle that attaches the muscle to bone is called a B, tendon. Excellent, right? Muscle connects to bone via tendons. Right, very good. Uh, uh, next one, uh, let's do Lindsay for number eight. Muscle fibers differ from typical cells in that muscle fibers. Lack a plasma membrane. Well, they, they definitely do have a plasma oh. membrane. They have a sarcolemma, right? Sarcolemma, sarco means muscle, um, muscle membrane. But uh, remember, uh, I was uh, in the lecture, I was explaining uh, in the muscles, they have a lot of nuclei. So they're multinucleated. Uh, the cardiac cells, they have... Uh, uh, one to two nuclei, and then smooth muscles have one nuclei, right, uh, for their cells. So remember, for um, muscles, they have many nuclei. Many nuclei is the correct answer. All right, the next, let's do Brian for number nine. The advantage of having many nuclei in a skeletal muscle fiber is the ability to uh, they produce large amounts of the muscle proteins needed for muscle contraction. Very good. Right, so D is the correct answer, um, right? So remember, what's, what, what's inside the nucleus? Nucleus has the RNA and DNA, right? RNA, DNA, um, and um, that's what will essentially cause, right? RNA to make DNA, and then in the ribosomes, it will translate it to protein. So large amounts of muscle proteins needed for contraction. Number 14, let's do uh, Brian. Um, I did the previous one, do you still want me to go? Oh. Uh, Kurt is the following. Curtis Heller? Yeah. The plasma membrane of a skeletal muscle is called the a sacrolemma. Sarcolemma is correct. Sarcolemma is correct. Very good. Uh, 15. Let's do the next person there is Jackson. 15. Which of the following best describes the sar sarcoplasmic ret? Reticulum. Uh, so I don't have my answers written here. So um, it's uh, C, storage and release site right. for calcium. Yeah. Very good. C, right. Remember, sarcoplasmic reticulum, uh, it's very similar. Sarco means muscle, but sarcoplasmic reticulum is like endoplasmic reticulum. Calcium, right? Calcium is your big player here. It's responsible for a uh, couple of things. So in here in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it's responsible for binding to bone and right binds to troponin, causing the tripomyosin move of, moving out of the way. Myosin had docking to actin, right? Very good. You must remember this. This is very 
uh, important question, I should say. 15. All right, 16. All right, how about Milan? Um, I'm sorry, we're doing six, uh, no, where are we doing 16? Uh, we're 16, yeah, Milan. Uh, the repeating contractile unit of the skeletal muscle fiber is the uh, sacromere. Sacromere is good. Sarcomere, I'm sorry. Very good. Next one is going to be 22. Uh, we got Christina. Okay, which of the following is not found in the structure labeled three? So three is this portion. Uh, mitochondria. Correct. Mitochondria is not found in the actual myofibrils, right? Myofibrils are the contractile unit. Here we see uh, the actin and myosin filaments. The mitochondria are the organelles, which are here. You see this is uh, in between the units, right? For ATP 25. Uh, let's do uh, Brian. What is released from the structure labeled nine? All right, let me go back. Um, the answer is A, uh, sorry, uh, D, calcium ions. Yeah, so number 25, whether it's released from number 25, number nine is calcium ions, correct? So what does that make structure? What does that make structure nine? Uh, the uh, endopl endoplastic reticulum, I think. But specifically to the Sar muscle? Sarcoplasmic reticulum, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. 28. Let's do... I'm going to call people who have their hands raised, so I only see three people, so I'm going to go back and forth between you guys. Uh, um, Milan? Identify the structure where ATP is produced, and that, if my memory serves me correctly, should be six. I don't see the picture yet. Oh, 28. Where is ATP produced? Um, um, sorry, no, that's one yeah. in the mitochondria. Right. Um, yeah. Very good. So ATP is produced in the mitochondria. I, I drew one, but I was looking at this. Uh, yeah, but one is the same, is the same thing, right? Very good. So 28, we said this uh, C, 29. Uh, let's, uh, oh, we got more people. So let's do um, Jackson. Where is ATP is consumed? Yeah, so let me go back. Uh, press three. Um, the answer is C. The answer is three. Uh, three, right? Yeah, uh, C was three, I believe. So, yeah, this is where ATP is consumed. I right? remember we said it binds to the myosin head to cause the power stroke, right? So, let me just double check to make sure. Uh, C was number three and let me go back here. Yeah, C is, C is number three is correct. ATP is consumed right here for the action of the myosin binding to the actin. Very good. Uh, number 32, we got uh, Christina. I actually have a question about 29. Yeah. Um, well, more specifically, would it be the thick filament? The, the, the thick filament, uh, but it binds to the thin filament, right? So the, the, the actual consumption of ATP is, the ATP is needed, to bind to the myosin head to basically restart the process, right? It restarts the process. Uh, it's ATP coupled because you need ATP for the power stroke to occur. So you could say, you could say to be crystal clear, you could say the thick filament, the myosin filament that binds to the myosin head, but the structure is sufficient. ATP works right in this region uh, to facilitate the power stroke, bringing the actin and myosin together. Cross bridging, right? Cross bridging occurring, but that's fine. Does that answer your question, or yes? All right, number number thirty-two. Okay. Uh, Interactions between actin 
and myosin filaments of the sarcomere, sarcomere are responsible for uh, muscle contraction. Yeah, very good. Right? We just kind of gave you some hints. Very good. Um, the next we got, oh, Ian, Ian, you're, you're up next, 35. Uh, each thin filament consists of A, two protein strands coiled helically around each other. Very good, All right? 35 is correct. Uh, 36, we got, let's do Brian. Which of the following best describes the term Titan? I think that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, um, that's, mm -hmm. Uh, a substance that accounts for the elasticity of resting muscle. Yeah, very good. Because uh, at the at the at the very ends, you will have this uh, thing here. This the Z lines. The Titan will essentially allow the spring back. So this allows elasticity. Right. Very good. Let's do thirty-seven. Let's do um, let's do Milan again. At rest, active sites. On the actin are blocked by the uh, tropomyosin molecule C. Very good. Uh, number 38, let's go to, uh, let's do, let's do crystal. You said 38. 38, yeah. Um, at rest. The tropomyosin molecule is held in place by the, the troponin molecule. Yeah, troponin is uh, basically holds it there, and troponin is what actually binds your calcium. Very good. Uh, 44, let's see who else we got. We got Curtis. Curtis, would you like to go? Yeah, cross bridges are portions of myosin molecules B. Yeah. Yeah, myosin docks, and you got your cross bridges. Very good. Uh, 47, we got, um, let's see, uh, Lindsay. Lindsay, are you there? Yes. Which of the following is an ion that is more concentrated inside the cell than outside? That's E, potassium. Right. And how, what, what, are they, what is my famous saying here? The cells are bags of potassium in a sea of sodium. Right. Uh, as long as you guys remember this, this will serve you well for a lot, a lot of um, questions. And it's a very basic concept that I would commit to memory. Good. Excellent. Number 50. Let's go back to Milan. Uh, during the blank phase of action potential development, voltage-gated sodium channels are open. Um, that will be uh, depolarization. Very good, right? I think we, I think after that diagram, I think it should be clear. Very good. Uh, after Milan, we got, uh, oh, we have Marilyn. Am I pronouncing it right? Marilyn? Yeah, Marlon. Oh, Marlon, sorry. I'm yeah. Marlon. 51. <laughs> 51. 51. If a Calcium channel were blocked, the blank phase of an action potential would not occur normally. Um, A. A, repolarization. Yeah. Very good. This this question, I would say, is also important for you guys to know. Very good. Uh, so depolarization, sodium, right? I would actually mark both of these, right? So sodium is depolarization. Repol is potassium. This is very, 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 very important. Okay, 53. Uh, let's go to Aaron. Uh, no, he's not raising his hand. Let's go to Jackson. Neurons and blank have electric. Electric. Yeah, electric, electrically excitable. Electrically excitable membranes that propagate action pro pro potentials. Potentials. Mm -hmm. um, 
What what uh um the A uh, osteocytes. I... So osteocytes. This is this is bone cells, right? So bones do not really conduct uh, uh, excitable uh, electrical potential. But what uh, uh what is uh, the topic of uh, this lecture or these question sets, if you remember, what were we talking about today? Muscle contractions. Muscles contraction, right? So which cells do you think? Uh, so Jackson, uh, which, which cells do you think we were talking about? Uh, the cell B, muscle cells. Excellent. Very good. So, so B is the correct answer, right? So sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, you may get tricked with all the words, but um, just go back to like, what are we talking about, right? But and but the basic concept, right? Neurons and muscles, right? They're both electrically active. Muscle cells being, right, uh, here, the skeletal muscle. Also, you have electrical excitability of the cardiac muscle, both being muscles. Right? So 55, let's go to, let's go to Ian. Each skeletal muscle fiber is controlled by a motor neuron at a single C neuromuscular junction. Very good. That is correct. Okay, we have more people raising their hands. Let's go, Jessica, 56. The narrow space between the synaptic terminal and the muscle fiber is the motor end plate. So motor end plate will be the, the end portion here. This is the B motor end plate. This would be your presynaptic neuron, but what is this space here? The, the cleft. The cleft, excellent, the cleft. Okay. So motor end plate is at the bottom. Uh, presynaptic neuron is here. This is the motor end plate. This is where the acetylcholine is coming through, right, from the vesicles. Remember, I said they were like binding like that. Very good, 57. So let's see who we got. Um, now we'll go back to Milan. If you guys want to answer questions, raise your hands. Otherwise, I'm not going to call on you. I can, an I can answer this one, Nick. I haven't gone yet. Okay, go ahead, Brenton. Sorry. Um, receptors for the... <sighs> Sorry, I can't pronounce it. Uh, ac acetyl? Just go word by word. Acetyl? Acetyl choline. Cho cho oh, very good. Are located on the uh, B motor end plate? Motor end plate is correct. Motor end plate is correct. 59. Uh, so let's see if there's any more... Um, People? Okay, so we we'll go back to Milan. I'm um, starting from the beginning. All right. So, in response to action potentials arriving along the transverse tubulus, the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases uh, calcium ions. Very good. Yeah, and we we kind of went overboard with that. All right. Next one, we we'll go. Lens. Uh, Ian. Ian is next. Uh, synaptic vesicles containing neurotransmitters are released by C exocytosis right remember remember right yeah very good calcium the word is used calcium mediated exocytosis at the neuromuscular junction so if you want to remember this calcium mediated exocytosis at the neuromuscular junction right calcium is your player very good uh after i am we got lindsay or 61 the cytoplasm of the neuromuscular synaptic terminal contains vesicles filled with the molecules of the neurotransmitter B acetylcholine very good right so this is our major uh, neurotransmitter for neuromuscular synaptic terminals very nice 62 we got um let's see oh we got angel angel would you like to go 62 uh when acetylcholine binds to receptors at the motor end plate, the end plate membrane becomes uh, A, more permeable to sodium ions. Very good, right? So it comes in, right? Remember, acetylcholine binds. And then what happens is the ligand channel opens, and then sodium is coming. Very good. 63. Uh, we got... Um, Um, next is Lindsay. Uh, I just went, I think Brian. Oh, yeah, oh, Brian, that's right. Brian is next. All right. Uh, triggering, triggering of the muscle action potential occurs after A, 
acetylcholine binds to chemically gated channels in the motor and plate membrane. Yep, very good. 64, we got Brian. Just uh, did 63. Uh, uh, next is Angel, just one, Brandon. How would a drug that blocks acetylcholine receptors at the motor end plate affect, sorry, I gotta move this skeletal muscle. Uh, D, it will cause flaccid paralysis. D, D is correct, right? It will cause flaccid, what drug? Yeah. We just talked about. Uh, so I don't know the answer to that question. No, we just talked about it. And sucks. You know, huh? Sucks. Sucks. Remember, it sucks because it's going to suck <laughs> if you're going to take this drug, right? Uh, the other ones uh, uh, that block receptors, right, is uh, your racaronium, pancuronium, right, vancuronium, so they call it vec, rock, sucks. So whenever, if you're in the ER and the Doc is about to intubate and he tells the nurses, drop some rock, drop some back, drop some socks. You should be like, oh yeah, I remember that one. We talked about that. 65. Uh, let me just say, uh, let me see how much I got. I, I got only a few questions left. Um, I know it's 12 o'clock. If you guys want to uh, stay, uh, it will be done within uh, you know five, 10 minutes. Uh, if you need to uh, go, you're more than welcome to go. This is recorded. Those who are st want to stay and finish up, um, I'm just going to call on you. Um, and we start from the list again. Ian, uh, Milan, sorry. Milan, would you like to continue? Yep. So how how would the loss of uh, acetylcholine estrays from the motor end plate affect skeletal muscle? Um, it, uh, so that muscle weakness? So what is uh, acetylcholine esterase, right? So choline esterase, let, so me, it, let it, me just it, go back. Let me go back. I'll show you guys so that should be clear. So it's supposed to release the uh, the CoA to go back and bind with the acetyl in the, right? There's this, this, this enzyme. What the that one break, breaks it all up, right? Yep. So there's an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase, esterase, acetylcholine esterase. This enzyme will bind to acetylcholine and it will chop it up. It will eat it up to break it into acetyl and into choline, right? So this enzyme chops it up. So what this is saying, so what this enzyme does, its inherent function is to chop up acetylcholine into its uh, two inactive forms, right? To be reabsorbed acetylcholine so this enzyme is there in the synaptic cleft to chop up acetylcholine acetylcholine is needed to depolarize the muscle for that to occur now let's go back to our question 65 so it says here loss of this enzyme so you do not have acetylcholine esterase you do not have this chopper so why don't you spasm would it be c so that is that is correct c is correct so, uh, you would cause spastic paralysis why because if you have acetylcholine coming in uh and uh causing right the motor end plate to depolarize and you have no enzyme to chop it up uh, and we need that for the next impulse to come in so this will cause spastic paralysis all right 65 is good uh next one 66 67 67 we got uh ian would you like to go okay uh, excitation contraction coupling is the D sequence of processes that links the action potential to contraction? Very good, right? So we link we link um, signals, right? Electrical signals to the actual mechanical contraction. Uh, um, Lindsay for sixty. Communication between axons and muscle fibers occur at specialized synapses called B neuromuscular junctions. Very good. Uh, 69, uh, we got Brian. When calcium ion uh, binds to troponin, uh, I have uh, C, troponin shifts to expose the active sites on actin. So, so um, um, let me see. When calcium binds to troponin, you said which, which answer? To expose uh, active site on actin. So it does, it's not a troponin that shifts. So be careful. Remember, I was talking about 
what is actually shifting the belt the the actual calcium bound, binds to troponin but what actually shifts all oh, right tropomyosin so which, uh, uh, yeah. is it um uh, let's let me see yeah it would be tropomyosin correct yeah so be careful uh i i was the moment you said it it's like it sounded almost right, but something said it doesn't sound right, right? Yeah, yeah, I think I missed yeah. right. So if I if I uh, if I switch this word to tropomyosin, if I said tropomyosin shifts to expose the active cytokine, that would have been correct. But troponin doesn't shift. Troponin actually binds calcium. So good. Be be very careful with the terms. Seventy one. Um, we got curse. Yeah, which of the following become uh, which of the following become connected by myosin cross bridges during muscle contraction? It would be a thin filaments and thick filaments. Yeah, thin being actin, thick is myosin. Uh, we got curus uh, uh, for um, curus. You just one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we we'll go back to Milan. Which of the following acts as an ATPs during the contraction cycle of the muscle? So basically think of it, where does ATP bind? Oh, um, the head portion of the myosin molecule, yeah. D. Excellent, because it has, to it has to hydrolyze, right? So ATP is hydrolyzes into ADP and phosphate, D is correct. Uh, 74, we got Ian next. Ooh, which statement about excitation contraction coupling is incorrect? Uh, it's C. Topomyosin moves to expose myosin binding site on actin. Uh, so is that incorrect? So tropomyosin does move away. It's going to expose myosin docking sites on actin filament. That sounds, that sounds good to me. So the key here is incorrect in the wrong thing. So the answer for this question is uh, A, Y, because calcium ion is not released from the T2 bill. T2 bill is where you have that uh, a, a signal, right? The signal of the action potential that's propagating. Calcium is actually released where? Reticulum. Excellent, right? So it's A, A is incorrect. Calcium is not released from the T2 bill. T2 bill is what propagates the signal. All right. After Ian, let's go. Uh, Lindsay, 477. The synchronous contraction of a single motor unit is known as a defasciculation. Fasciculation is correct. It's uh, Remember, I was taking, it's like twitches. I was talking to you about when uh, sucks binds, right? Causes fasciculation switches. Uh, 96, we got uh, Brian. Um, during anaerobic glycolysis, which of the following does not occur? Uh, D, the mitochondria are required. Yeah, so uh, anaerobic means without lack of oxygen, right? And during anaerobic glycolysis, which is not required, um, um, mitochondria is not required. Very good. Uh, why? Because mitochondria is where you have prep cycle, right? Prep cycle or citric acid cycle, and you have the oxidative phosphorylation occurring. So I could say uh, ox phosphorylation. This is basically a coupling of uh, oxygen right to your NADH and FADH carriers. All right, but for your purposes, right, anaerobic no oxygen mitochondria is not required. Uh, One twelve. We got, uh, we got, uh, we got, we got to go back to Milan. After death, uh, muscle fibers run out of ATP and calcium begins to leak from a sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm. Uh, this results in a condition known as rigor mortis. Yeah. So you see somebody in rigor, right? They all like stiffen up, right? And that's what happens, right? When you have no more conduction, that's what occurs. Uh, Ian for... 113. The muscle weakness of myasthenia gravis results from B, loss of acetylcholine receptors in the end plate membrane. Excellent, right? 
Anyone have a question about this? This is also one of, one of the important topics uh, to go over. I think this concludes our questions. Uh, any questions about this myasthemia gravis uh, deal? Uh, this is very important. Uh, there'll be some questions on that. Does anyone not know how that actually occurs? I have a question that's kind of related. So is it a, is it a common condition or is it? Yeah, it's, it's in terms of commonality, I wouldn't say it's very common. Um, I would say uh, the condition in itself is caused by autoimmune, auto, autoimmune disorder. And autoimmune disorder, think of it like this. You have your immune head, headquarters, right? We're going to say this is your immune headquarters. And the B cells in the body, they start to make antibodies inappropriately. And these bodies, these antibodies, when they come, they start binding here on these receptors. And if you see, right, if they bind on these receptors, they block these receptors. And if they block these receptors, there's less of acetylcholine that's able to work on them. Sure, sure there's some uh, receptors where it's still available, meaning some acetylcholine can bind. But what you will see is these people will have progressive muscle weakness. So in the to translate myasthemia gravis, it means um, heavy, heavy muscle weakness, right? That's the definition of it. So what's the cause? It's autoimmune disease. B cells make antibodies directed against nicotinic cholinergic receptors. They dock, they block them, causing uh, less acetylcholine to come in, less sodium to come in. Person develops progressive muscle weakness. And what's uh, the medication class to, to give to these patients to counteract these effects? Immunosuppressants, or uh, pertaining to this mechanism. Can we say atropine? Uh, well, atropine is it blocks the parasympathetic system. But in terms of this diagram, what can I block here? And I <laughs> kind of give you guys a hint. The enzyme, the esterase. The right. So yeah. Yeah. Very good. So if this enzyme chops up acetylcholine, right? If I give a drug, uh, acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. Uh, typical names being physostigmine, neostigmine. It blocks this enzyme. If I block this enzyme, more acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. Hopefully, I can reach more receptors that are not blocked. And actually, these patients, when they get this drug, they have uh, more activity. They're more active. They are able to perform activities of daily living. They don't get tired with persistent um, activity when you just give this medication. All right, and that's very important for you to guys know for myasthemia gravis, the mechanism of action, and what drugs to use, uh, what class of drugs, I should say. Any other questions that you guys have? I have a question. Yeah. So say you have to uh, intubate a patient, and um, I know from the little reading I did, uh, diazepam is contraindicated for myasthenia gravis. You wouldn't give that to the patient if they had it. So... so the, um, the way you want to base your drugs is not only the contraindications, right? Muscle weakness. But, uh, the reason why is, you know, uh, if you're on the ventilator, the ventilator is going to breathe for them. But what you, what you want to remember, a patient who is intubated, and for the initial phase, prior to intubation, they have intact mental status. So you want to give them some sort of medications to sedate them. But after you intubate it, the tube is causing pain. So... I feel that too. And the only medications that will take away the pain is analgesia. So the way you give the drugs is you have to look at the profile, what it does. So benzodiazepines, right? Like diazepam, it causes sedation. It causes uh, retrograde amnesia. It causes uh, hypnosis. You go to sleep, but it doesn't have analgesic properties. Then you have medications like fentanyl, morphine, right? Hydromorphone that has analgesia to them that take away pain. And then you have medications uh, such as paralytics that we talked about, um, rock, socks, right? And they take away your uh, muscle tone. They cause you to get plus paralysis. So um, to, to answer your questions, yeah, there should not be contraindications. So, and you have to look if it's relative contraindication or absolute. If it's absolute, you don't want to give. But in those settings, the patient is going to be on the ventilator. And uh, if they're on the ventilator, the machine will be breathing for them. Uh, so the myasthemia gravis, right, causes severe muscle weakness. If I give you diazepam, right, I don't, uh, I can take away your ability to breathe. All right, gotcha. Okay. Any other questions? 
Yeah, I know Lindsay asked a similar question earlier, but what causes the like the neuron to switch from the resting state to the activation state? Like what is going on in the body to cause that change? So I know it's negative 70 to yeah. whatever the number, but is so, there like a so so think of it like this, right? We we depolarized we sodium was coming in, right? So this up until this phase here, sodium was coming in, right? At this phase, uh, let's say at this portion. The activation gate is open and an activation gate closed. So sodium channel, uh, sorry, sodium cannot come through the sodium channel. But at the same time, at the same time, you have potassium channels that are voltage gated that are becoming open at this phase for repolarization to occur. So you have heavy, heavy efflux, meaning efflux, meaning potassium is leaving. And if positive charge is leaving the cell, its take is going from positive 30 plus 10, zero minus 30 minus 50 and here at this stage right it it, it goes to it's hyperpolarized it becomes very negative for the sodium to again get the resting status and at this portion here we may have the potassium right once it reaches here we have again the same thing occurring right activation gate is open no potassium is coming in this is closed right so no potassium can leak out and at this stage we have repolarized the membrane. So now you're, you are going back to this negative 70 um, state, right? So no more potassium can leave, right? And now we're again, hyper excitable for the next sodium to come in. So it's, it's, it's twofold. It's propagation of electrical signal from your somatic system. And then the ion exchange at the chemical and then followed by the coupling of the mechanical contraction. So electrical, chemical, mechanical. Okay, thank you. All right.